All right, guys, uh, this time we are trying to find the net ionic equation. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we need two things. Number one, we need a balanced chemical equation with the physical states of matter. And we're going to call that the molecular equation. That's just a fancy name for the equation that you're used to seeing. And in order to figure out these states of matter, we're going to use a list of solubility rules. This is just a set of rules that tells us uh, how a compound behaves when you put it in water. Uh, some things like table salt, like you're used to, will dissolve in water. Uh, some things, when you put in water, will just sit there. They will not break down and dissolve. Okay? The way you use this is you take a look at each compound and you try to find a rule that applies to either the cation, the first positive ion, or the anion, the negative ion. So this is iron chloride. So what I am looking for on my list of solubility rules is anything that talks about either iron or chloride. Okay. So I start with rule number one, talks about acids. Uh, that doesn't help. Number two is the alkali, group one metals, and ammonium. That doesn't talk about either iron or chloride. These are the ions I'm looking for. Uh, three says acetate perchlorate, chlorate. Now be careful, it does have chlor in it, but this is chloride. If it's an element on the periodic table, it's chloride. So that doesn't help us. Uh, acetate perchlorate, nope, silver, lead, mercury. At number five, we finally get to a chloride rule. Okay, so this is pertaining to this chloride ion right here. So this is the rule that we are going to use. It tells us that chlorides are soluble. Okay. Soluble equals will dissolve and the state of matter that we use for that is going to be AQ4 aqueous. So turning back to my molecular equation I see that the solubility table tells us that chloride compounds do dissolve AQ for aqueous. <clears throat> Next we take a look at ammonium phosphate. In order to be successful at this you need to know your polyatomic ions. So we're looking for something that applies to either ammonium or phosphate. This time we have an ammonium ion and we have a phosphate ion. Okay so uh, again acids no these are group one but ammonium is listed here. So this is the first rule that we come across that deals with either of these. So we are going to use this and it says that these guys are soluble which means they will dissolve which we call aqueous. Okay. Uh, moving on we have up uh, ammonium chloride again. Well we just determined that chlorides are soluble and a rule higher than that is the one we just used for ammonium. So we know that that is going to be soluble, will dissolve, aqueous. Now we just have to figure out what's going on with this iron phosphate right here. So I return to my rules. So this time I'm looking for an iron ion or a phosphate ion, a rule for these. So uh, the ammonium no longer applies. Acetate perchlorate, nope. Silver, lead, mercury, no. Chlorides, bromides, no. Uh, finally, I see in rule number six here something about phosphates. And this tells us that phosphates are insoluble. Insoluble. Well, soluble meant will dissolve, so we called it aqueous. Insoluble. That means that if I put this substance into water, it's going to remain in the solid phase. It's not going to dissolve. We'll be able to see it inside of that water solution. So we will give this the phase of solid. Okay. So now we have finished writing out our completed molecular equation with the correct states of matter using the um, solubility rules. So let's go ahead and write out next our uh, total or sometimes referred to as your complete ionic equation. All we're doing this time is taking a look at the different compounds that are in this reaction. 
and showing the ions that they're going to make. Anything that is aqueous, any AQs here, will break apart into their ions. So we're going to see that iron chloride is going to break down to an iron ion, and it's going to break down into a chlorine ion. Okay. Well, we do show the charges for everything. I can tell that iron right here is going to be iron 3. I know that because chlorine itself is a minus 1 ion, and if I needed 3 of these to balance out my iron, that had to be a positive 3 charge that iron was carrying. And because it's still in water, it's an aqueous ion. The chlorine over here, uh, chlorine always has a minus 1 charge, so we show that. And it's plus in between each. You see how this was iron chloride, okay? So we have pluses. Now, the other thing that we have to consider here is that this is chlorine 3, 3 chlorine. So the way we show that is we put the subscript as a coefficient here. So the next thing we have is uh, ammonium phosphate, aqueous, so it will go ahead and dissociate. So this is three ammoniums this time, so it's going to be three NH4, and ammonium is a positive one ion because it's still in the water solution, it's aqueous. And we add plus the negative ion. This is phosphate. Phosphate is a minus three charge. It is in water, so it's going to be aqueous. Now I move on to the other side of the equation. Okay, So I see that I have three ammonium ions, so three ammoniums. Each ammonium carries a positive one charge. Plus I have three chlorines. This three gets distributed to everything in the compound. So three chlorines, and that's a minus charge. Let me go back and show my aqueous for each of these plus the iron phosphate now notice how this is a solid okay solid means that it does not ionize in water it's not going to break apart so i'm just going to go plus the iron phosphate which stays a solid. There's no charge on it because it's a neutral compound. My iron charge balances out my phosphate. Okay. So we have finished with the total ionic equation. In order to determine the net ionic equation, we simply cancel out the items that occur on both sides of the equation. Okay. So I can see that I have three chloride ions on the reactant side. So I cancel those out with the three chloride ions on the uh, product side. I also have three ammonium ions in the reactants, three ammonium ions in the products. Those cancel. So I have canceled everything that I could. So what remains is written down as my net ionic equation. So I have an iron 3 ion. Okay. That reacts with the phosphate ion that was still in the solution. And these guys come together to make iron phosphate. So, this right here is my net ionic equation. If you notice, I had three iron, I'm sorry, three chlorine ions and three ammonium ions before the reaction, and I also had them after the reaction. We refer to these things that don't actually participate in the reaction, they're just things that are there on both sides. These are known as our spectator ions. Okay. It's sort of like at a football game. These guys are the uh, people in the, 
in the stands. They're not playing the game. They're there to watch. These guys, my iron three, my phosphate, and my iron phosphate, these are the players in this chemical reaction. Okay. And the last thing is this last term, this solid that forms whenever you mix two aqueous things and you get a solid come out of it, this guy is known as our precipitate. You can think of it like precipitation, like rain, like you know maybe hail in this case, some solid that just falls down. Okay. So we can also do this when we're given a word problem. We can take aqueous copper to nitrate, so Copper 2 nitrate is Cu NO3 2 and it's aqueous. Alright, that reacts with meaning plus aqueous potassium carbonate. So carbonate is a minus two ion, potassium was a plus one, so it's gonna be K2 CO3. Alright, and it tells us we get solid copper 2 carbonate out of this reaction. So, copper is a plus 2, carbonate is a minus 2, and it gives us our formula here, CuCO3. Okay. Now it says that this is a solid. Well, if you notice, it told us part of the story, but there are more elements here that haven't been used. See, I've used copper and carbonate ion over here, but I haven't used potassium or nitrate. And obviously, law of conservation of matter, I can't lose this. So I have to realize that the other thing that's made is going to be potassium with nitrate, KNO3. And these come together one to one because potassium's a positive one, nitrate's a minus one. It doesn't matter that there were two on this side of the potassiums. It doesn't carry over. I only write as many potassiums as I need to join up with the other thing it's meeting with. In this case, nitrate. So plus one and minus one just means one of each. Okay. So I don't know what state of matter this is. So I can use my solubility rules to go ahead and figure this out. It was potassium nitrate. And I see my second rule says potassiums are soluble. So this will be AQ. Okay. So this is my molecular formula. Let's go ahead and write our uh, total ionic equation now. Okay, remember to do this. We just separate everything that will separate. I get copper. I can see that because nitrate's a minus one and I have two of them, that means that copper had to be a positive two. It's aqueous. Plus my NO3 ion, which I know is a minus one. Plus I have, oh, I'm sorry, I had two nitrates. Don't forget your two. Uh, just like I have two potassiums. That's a positive one ion plus I have a carbonate ion here. Carbonate is a minus two ion. This comes together to form I have copper two carbonate but I see that it's a solid so do not break this apart. It will not come apart in an aqueous solution. I also have another aqueous solution so that it comes apart potassium plus my nitrate. All right. This is going to be AQ. This is going to be AQ. And I am, let's see, oh, just realized that I probably need to balance this. Okay, you must balance your equation. So uh, everything's balanced except I have two nitrates and two potassiums over here, and I've got potassium nitrate. So that just needed a two right there. And the only thing that's going to affect is, look, I'll have two potassiums and I'll have two nitrates. Okay, So that is our total ionic. Let's determine what our spectator ions are. Our spectator are what has, occurs on both sides. I see that I have two nitrates, two nitrates, uh, two potassiums, and two potassiums. So these guys don't actually participate. They're just there to watch. So we can go ahead and figure out our um, net ionic equation.
and we just write down what hasn't been used. I see a copper right there, copper ion. Comes together with a carbonate ion. And this will make copper to carbonate, which is a solid. The crossed out things again are spectator ions. The solid that is formed from this is known as a precipitate.